What's going on, Duck Nation? College Football Nation, this is Yo Duck Bros back for another video. And this, my friends, is probably going to be the biggest game of the regular season. Revenge! Yes. <gasps> I love revenge! And I'm not at this one! It's, yeah. it's a dish best served cold with the beer and some gravy fries. And wings. Yes. So, this is where Oregon is, 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 not is trying to, is going to get their revenge over Stanford in which they... In their it. house. In their house, just like they did it in our house last year. And because I am not there, we probably will win because every time I've been there, yeah, let's, we let's, have uh, lost. Let's recap Spencer's visits to Autzen Stadium when Stanford has been the opponent. He went there last year with national championship implications on the line, and they lost, which was one of the worst days of my life. Yep. Back in the day of this, actually, this exact jersey would have been relevant at that time in 2001 when Oregon was currently undefeated at the time with if they would have won that game they essentially would have you know cruised through which would have given them the national championship berth against Miami which they may still have lost pretty bad but better than Nebraska yeah so and uh, they lost that one too and he was I there. really don't have a very good history of going to Stanford games when they matter so I've chosen and <laughs> not to drive down to Palo Alto, I have also, and grace my presence yeah, there. Yeah, I have also forbidden him from doing so for the rest of his human existence. Therefore, let's get into the real business. So, outside of us just saying it like fans would say it, why is Oregon going to win this game? Well, there's a, a couple of very important reasons why. Well, A, one, because we're better. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I would be willing to wager that outside of the offensive line, which even still is pretty close... Oregon's probably better at every skill position. Now, there's a, probably a couple of exceptions there. Uh, Ty Montgomery is really good. Are we talking total team or just offense? Offense, mainly. I was going to say. D defense, no. Stanford's defense is legit. I'm not going to say it, they're not. So don't even, don't misconstrue that because their front seven is like freaking crazy. Although I will say this, their offensive line is very good. But their offensive line is not bigger than Stan than Tennessee's, you know, offensive line. And we dealt with that. Those guys are massive. Tiny Richardson and all those guys were huge. So I can imagine. <laughs> By the way, just we should have a unrelated. better time. I think that one of the funniest names for a huge guy is Tiny. <laughs> Which is it's like yeah. do, it's like they do it on purpose. Yeah, just for it to be funny. But let's get to the real business. So. Here's one of the main reasons why I think that Oregon's not going to have a huge problem, and it's very reminiscent to what we just dealt with with UCLA, is that Kevin Hogan just can't throw the ball. I mean, I'm telling you, they just played Oregon State, and Oregon State's total defense is awful in the 90s. Like, they're ranked really, really bad. And their pass defense up until pretty much that game was not very good. No, and I'm... We'll give them the benefit of the doubt, only to an extent because they were playing at home. So, you know, everybody's getting, night all, game. getting all fired up, the night game. It's But I'm just saying, though, you know, for Oregon State to hang with to hang with Stanford like that and to watch Kevin Hogan just throw ducks. I mean, a lot of those balls were wobbly. They didn't they did, just didn't look good. They just they had no zip on them. He doesn't have a great arm. He has a mediocre no. arm. He, by the way, he has one of the weirdest releases. I know. You I notice don't, that. He I don't like it. He does, and it's kind of similar to what Sean Mannion does. They have like this weird wind-up thing. Like I've, I've not like usually a quarterback is. It's a pretty fast release. Yeah. They do like this weird like wind-up throw, and it's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. And it, so for the stat line that Hogan had in that game, he was 8 of 18 for 88 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. That's a QBR of 27, by the way, for people that are keeping score at home. That's really bad. I just think, you know, if... And obviously it's not going to be exactly the same, but I honestly think that if Oregon State can hold them to 8 of 18 passing... Sure. We should be able to do something similar. I know that Stanford's going to be playing at home, so they're probably going to play better. Um, but I do not think that Kevin Hogan is going to be able to do what he did last year and just no. come in and play the perfect game and you know make all these. You know, our guys are not going to be sleepwalking and, and dropping passes and missing blocks. And no. 
I just, you know, you got to give credit. You, you got to give credit where credits due. They won the game. They played a great game. We played a not a great game, but it's, they still they still won regardless. So you have to give them credit. But I think this year we're just on a different level. I think. Marcus Mariota, with another year under his belt running this offense, is really, really going to help. Uh, the adversity that we've had with Washington on the road and us UCLA. at home against UCLA, I think it's just going to be that much more of a, um, a help to being on the road against a really good Stanford team. But I just think... Mark Helfrich has a he has a very disciplined squad. Mm-hmm. I, I actually I personally did not expect that in his first year at all. I thought it was going to be kind of like a like an awkward transition to an extent, just because he's a different you know, he's a completely different personality than Chip Kelly, and I, I thought that maybe it was going to take a little bit of time for the players to really grab onto that all the way. But man, they 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 grab that and they're running with it all the way. I mean, they are totally have not missed the a beat. System. No, not at all. They're actually uh, stat wise. I just looked at this today. Stat wise, they're almost better in every offensive category and most defensive categories than the twenty ten well, team. Well, to Chip his Kelly. to his credit. He didn't try and do anything d- different. At least not super. Different. I mean, he has basically decided, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it scenario. I mean, he's basically just, this works, we're going to keep using it. I'm going to do it. I mean, he does pass the ball quite a bit more than Chip Kelly, which I actually welcome. I've wanted to do that for a long time, but we just now have the receivers that are athletic enough and fast and enough to get there. He's not a stubborn play caller. I, I, yeah, he doesn't just run and run and run and run until the run works. He'll do other things. Yeah, if, if the if the play's not working, he's not gonna he's not gonna do it four times until it does. We saw that a lot with Chip. But Kelly. I, you know, and I think you know, just if we look at this Stanford game for what it is, and we watch. We watch the Utah game, and we watch really anybody that's given Stanford a really tough time, like Washington, and why, um, and, the Washington. And, even, and even and even Oregon State to a degree, even though they were never ahead. You know they played them pretty tough, and they had chances to get back in the game. Their perimeter this year against you know against the the screen passes, you know running around to the outside, getting to the edges, they're just not very fast rotating over like they have before. Mm-hmm. And I think Oregon is going to really do a good job of exploiting those things and really just kind of making them be aware and trying to, to um, take away that, that, that angle that Oregon likes to take on the sideline. But that's just going to open up the middle. Mm-hmm. And I think eventually Byron Marshall and Thomas Tyner are going to de- just wear down the... And I think the offensive line, um, Ronis Grassu was quoted this, you know, in Bleacher Report and, and even on... Um, you know, Sports Illustrated and stuff, two different uh, places I've seen this. He he thought last year Stanford just whooped them. And they he, did. They and, really did. And he said, we are not going to let that happen this time. We are going to take it to them, and we're going to win this battle in the trenches. And so. there's a very big reason of why that's going to happen, too, because Stanford's one of their best defensive players is out for the rest of the year. And Ben Gardner's out for the rest of the season with a pectoral injury. And that's a huge, huge loss for their defense. He yeah. was one of the best players they had on in that in that front seven and the guy that's replacing him uh, what uh, Henry Anderson he's he's questionable at this point I mean I know that the game's still you know a week and a half away or like a week away but <laughs> if he's not ready to go either that's gonna be a monstrous loss for that defense I know there's still I, there's still the Murf, the uh, Murphy and there's still uh, Shane scove and I mean, there's still some other really good players in that defense but if you don't have another guy on the end, uh, like a Ben Gardner, or even just the guy that's supposed to be taking over his spot, that's going to be a giant hole that Oregon, you know they're going to try to exploit that to the nth degree that they can. I just, yeah, I, I you know, and I just think this year we're just, our athletes are better. I mean, I thought they were last year, but I think this year we're just playing better. Uh, Mariota just looks better. Um, better, and, better decision making. Yeah, you know, I just feel like overall this is our year, and I just feel like top to bottom for the most part, Minus a few key positions, I think we're really just we're well we're 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 more equipped to go on the road and win this game. And I think because of our speed and because of our ability to attack the perimeter and and their inability to really defend it that well, I think that's really going to be the key to this game. Uh, I know we're going to get turnovers. We've been doing that all year long. I I don't expect that to be any different this time. Although Stanford is a very disciplined team, I do feel at some point we're going to get a, a key turnover. Or a big play or a on big offense. play on offense. Something's going to happen. I just feel like this game isn't going to be as close as people think it will be. No, especially with how bad Kevin Hogan's been playing lately. I mean, 
he has not looked no. I mean the UCLA the UCLA game to an ex- was his definitely his best game in the last three games or so that they played or last four games I guess because there was the Utah game but because he was like eighteen and twenty five for two twenty seven and a touchdown and an interception which still isn't that great I mean it's a QBR of seventy eight point nine which is I mean that's that's pretty good but I mean and then there was the Washington game he only had a hundred yards of passing in that it's you, you're gonna if, with a team like Oregon you're gonna have to try to get as many points early as you can because we've already found with Stanford that because their offense isn't nearly the same caliber as it was last year, they don't play very well if you're going to end up getting into a shootout. They just they can't score those types of points. No. They just they can't do it. Kevin Hogan's not as skilled of a passer as we thought that he was unless they're like those little check down passes or little tiny screens. He just he doesn't have the same type of firepower. Well, and he doesn't weapons. have the tight end. he doesn't have the tight ends and the weapons. No, no, he doesn't have Stephon Taylor. Um, I mean, and he, he has Ty Montgomery, and that dude is really good. But you just you can't. one guy is not going to be able to win the game. No, not at all. And um, you know, I just there I don't really know how else to say it, but there's just uh, I look at top to bottom especially with the key injuries that they have now on the defensive line, which is where they really generate most of their pressure and really do uh, a great job of not allowing qu- quarterbacks to really get comfortable back there. I think, A, with Mario to being as mobile as he is, it wouldn't really matter as much anyway, but I think even now that that's less of an issue, it's going to be even easier for him to get the passes he wants, get the protection that he needs, and then also to get the running lanes for the running backs. So, um, you know, I'm... I. Th- Wow, that's uh, wow, that, kinda, that is that brutal. Uh, that accelerated quickly. In case you're wondering why I kept looking up, it's probably one of the most intense episodes of Law and Order I've ever seen. Wowzer, she is getting beaten up right now. Oh uh, yeah. Anyways, back to this. <laughs> so that was weird. Um, yeah. So without further, I think we've covered most of what we needed to talk about here. Pretty much the moral of the story is Oregon is a better overall team than Stanford. If it gets to a shootout, it's just it, it favors Oregon in every way you can cut it. Pretty much. So I think without further ado, score prediction time. I went first last time, which was really awkward. So you can go first this time. What do you, what do you got? I let's see. You know, I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go Oregon. Forty-eight. I think Stanford will get thirteen. Thirteen. Forty-eight to thirteen is what I have. A real blowout, huh? A real, a real. I just, yeah, I, a I, real I, knocking of the slobber, huh? I, I feel that, yeah, I th- that's how, that's how I see it going. So, what do you think? So, for me, now I was, I was the conservative guy last time, even though I really, realistically, I wasn't because I still said we we're gonna blow them out anyways. But, um, I don't know. And I, I just told, I talked to you about this the other night. I'm like really paranoid about it. Just because of, and especially with this, with this whole Marcus Mariota on the cover of Sports Illustrated thing, because they they have that curse thing going on, and I hate it. But as much of a part of me thinks that it could be another one of those weird grinder games, like I really fear it being, because Stanford can definitely win this game. I think that it would take a lot, and I mean a lot of things playing the right way for them for that to happen. I'm going to say that Oregon's going to beat them. I'm gonna say I'm gonna, it's gonna be 45 to 21. I think that they will score more than I had anticipated them scoring. because I think they're gonna be able to run the ball, not not like with ease, but they're gonna. I think that that guy they have, I can, I can never remember his name. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not important. I think he's probably gonna put up like a buck 30 on the ground. I think he might have a, might have at least one one touchdown. But I just I don't think that they're gonna be able to slow down Oregon's offense enough to stay in the game for long. I just don't. And if the, if it ends up turning into one of those grinders for three quarters, Oregon's going to do it in similar fashion where they just blow it open in the fourth because we just have the athletes to do that. Well said. Well said. Well said. So, so with uh, without further ado, I think we're about to sign off for another episode of uh, football talk, yes. exciting football talk. I think this is going to be the game that Mariota really – Kind of uh, sets his Heisman campaign in stone. I, I don't, not necessarily saying that like he's gonna win it immediately because of this, but that's gonna be like the one, the one really big moment that's like, oh, hey, he he had a big game when, you know, when they needed to have one. So, I think that'll be big stuff. Without further ado, my friends, duck duck fans, college football fans, basketball fans, 
hockey fans, cricket fans, tennis fans, underwater basket weaving fans, diving fans, wherever you are, skydiving fans. Thanks for watching. And as always, go Ducks. Frank Dukes. Frank Dukes. He's just a great guy. Bloodsport.